How old do you think this result from filler injection to the nasal bridge is? 30 years old? 50 years old? How about 110 years old? Impressive, right? Let's talk about the origin of the facial fillers. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Aesthetic Minutes. In case you have noticed, fillers currently dominate the field of aesthetic medicine. And today, patients can pick from dozens of different filler options, all of which are safe, effective, and approved for use in the United States. Unfortunately, it wasn't always like this, and the history of how we got here might leave you surprised. Most of us presume that fillers are the most modern of aesthetic procedures. However, the truth is that cosmetic fillers are some of the oldest tools in plastic surgery, predating even surgeries like the facelift. The first choice of filler material in the 19th century? Paraffin, a troublesome implant that transformed the field of plastic surgery and dominated for 20 years until its harmful long-term effects were discovered. As early as the 1890s, surgeons were already searching for an injectable material that could be used to fill in facial defects. Plastic surgeons like Dr. Coley remarked that developing a treatment that was painless, caused no scarring if properly performed, and obviated surgery would be a cornerstone achievement in cosmetic medicine. However, finding a material that could be easily injected into tissues and was well tolerated by the body was a seemingly impossible task in the late 1800s. Up until that point, most materials utilized were hard and could only be implanted through open surgery. Metals such as gold and silver, and materials such as ivory and celluloid, and even cork, were all used but often plagued by infection, extrusion, and tissue reactions. However, with the invention of the hypodermic needle and syringe in 1853 by Charles Pravaz and Alexander Wood, it had become conceivable that a gel-like prosthesis could be injected through the skin without surgery. Finding a suitable material for injection proved to be elusive until the advent of fat transplantation. In 1893, Gustav Neuber, a German surgeon, introduced autologous fat as a reconstructive option when he harvested thigh fat and surgically implanted it into the face of a patient disfigured by osteomyelitis. The fat was found to partially survive, creating a long-lasting result without tissue reactions. The first surgeon to actually inject fat through a hypodermic needle into the face for cosmetic purposes was German surgeon Eugene Hollander in the early 1900s. Hollander obtained fat from the patient and mixed it with fat from rams under the impression that the harder fat from the animal would somehow allow the mixture to last longer. It did not. Unfortunately, despite the early impressive results, more than 50% of the fat disappeared in the first year. In addition, the need for open surgery to harvest the fat made the procedure less than ideal for patients, especially in the pre-antibiotic era. Because of these drawbacks, surgeons continued to search for a durable material that could replace fat as an injectable, and they turned their attention to a new array of petroleum-derived compounds. An accidental discovery by two different chemists led to the creation of the material that would become the very first injectable alloplastic filler implant, paraffin wax. First discovered by German chemist Karl Ludwig von Reichenbach in 1830, paraffin proved to be an excellent lubricant and candle fuel, achieving widespread production and availability in the US by the late 1800s. In 1859, American chemist Robert Chesebro discovered a thinner, more viscous form of paraffin, which he called Vaseline. Due to its excellent skin protectant and emollient properties, Vaseline quickly found adoption for a variety of common skin conditions with global use and production. Paraffin and Vaseline, being both derivatives of petroleum, consist of a mixture of small, relatively inert hydrocarbons that exist as semi-solids that are moldable at room temperature. Paraffin was first explored as an injectable in humans by American neurologist James Corning in Connecticut in 1891 to prevent the regrowth of severed nerves in patients with chronic neuropathic pain. The first use of paraffin injections in plastic surgery came at the hands of prominent Austrian surgeon Robert Gersuni in 1899, who injected Vaseline into the scrotum of a young man afflicted with tuberculous epididymitis to recreate the lost testicular volume. Gersuni then expanded his technique to incorporate a mixture of Vaseline and paraffin with a fine-tuned melting point that allowed for improved ease of injection, lessened pain, and reduced thermal tissue injury. Given the extraordinary immediate results of paraffin that were unrivaled for the time period, the popularity of paraffin injections for cosmetic purposes took off rapidly where it was used for the correction of fine wrinkles and featural imperfections. 
It also quickly became the preferred method of correction of the saddle nose deformity, a very common facial deformity at the time due to syphilis. As a result, between 1890 and 1910, paraffin injections quickly gained notoriety, with thousands of patients receiving facial injections for a wide variety of deformities, from wrinkles to war injuries, despite the lack of any human studies on its effectiveness and long-term safety. Unlike today, there is no established governmental body, like the FDA, responsible for overseeing the safety of even basic medications or medical products. In addition, clinicians were given wide latitude to issue any treatment they thought appropriate at the time, which often meant relying on anecdotal information and experience without any actual clinical trial data. This meant that knowledge of late-onset complications was absent prior to allowing its use, placing patients at an incredible risk. Surely enough, despite the early optimism surrounding paraffin, surgeons did indeed begin to see adverse events following injection, both acute and chronic. In the beginning, most of the complications witnessed occurred immediately upon injection, especially over the nasal bridge, and they were typically severe. These complications resulted from what is known as vascular embolization of paraffin filler. Vascular embolization occurs when any solid material is accidentally injected into a vessel. Once within a vessel, the material can flow downstream and eventually occlude smaller branches that are too narrow to allow the passage of the material, blocking the flow of blood to the tissues and potentially causing major irreversible organ injury. If the affected vessel was a vein, the patient could develop a pulmonary embolism due to the flow of filler from the venous system of the face down to the right ventricle of the heart with subsequent entry into the main pulmonary circulation, causing irreversible lung injury. If the vessel was an artery, then the patient could incur a stroke or permanent vision loss due to the backflow of filler through the ophthalmic artery, proceeding to lodge in the retinal artery, causing acute vision loss, or enter the internal carotid and lodge in the cerebral arteries, causing a cerebral stroke. Despite these early severe complications, many surgeons continued to inject paraffin, reasoning that the problem had more to do with the technique than the paraffin itself. However, in addition to these acute short-term complications, surgeons also began to bear witness to disastrous late-onset side effects in patients with paraffin, many of which were presenting with disfigurement only years after injection. By 1910, reports began to pile up about these severe reactions and by 1920, studies describing the chronic granulomatous inflammation surrounding paraffin, known as paraffinomas, established the pathophysiology of this disfiguring tissue reaction, essentially terminating the use of paraffin in the United States. Although paraffin use was largely abandoned in the US by 1920, it left an impact on the overall public impression of unregulated medical drugs and devices, swaying public opinion strongly in support of increased oversight by the federal government, which would eventually lead to the creation of the body that today is known as the Food and Drug Administration. The paraffin story is a cautionary tale on the importance of performing long-term safety studies prior to rolling out any new treatments to the public. Unfortunately, federal oversight of injectable implant materials didn't come until the 1960s and 70s, leaving the door open for the next unregulated injectable debacle, silicone. To find out more about the trials and tribulations of liquid silicone and plastic surgery, tune in to our next episode of Aesthetic Minutes. Thank you for watching.